Hi, I'm Darren. I'm a project management professional, and today I'm going to show you how our portfolio manager helps you keep up to a thousand projects and various teams all on track. I'm going to start out by going through the structure of the manager so you understand the key aspects of portfolio management that are baked into its foundations. And then I'm going to go through a video walkthrough of the entire manager and focus on the key insights that come from our comprehensive dashboard. Here we see the structure of the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet, which is available on Google Sheets or Excel, is identical. It begins with the README tab, that's what we're looking at, two input tabs, the beige colors are data entry tabs, and five fully automated tabs. These are dashboards and calculations that let you know what's up. So in the settings and tasks tab, you input the parameters of your project and the details of your tasks. And automatically, our portfolio manager produces the five views here. Let's go into the settings. You begin with the settings. This is where you're, in a sense, creating a glossary for your project. You're defining the parameters of all your different projects. You give your projects a name, a start date, and an end date. A start date and an end date are required for all of the calculations to work. So if you don't know the start or end date, just put in some placeholder text. And you can have up to a thousand projects, all calculated at the same time. You go into the status. This is where you put your different statuses. So you can write your own statuses here. You can change the status to whatever status you need. Maybe valid, maybe on hold. Then you have your priorities, high, medium, low. You can change this to red, yellow, green, or you can even use the more complicated Eisenhower matrix, whatever you need for your priorities. Then your phases, you will actually categorize your tasks by phases. Milestones, these are large accomplishments. You can define them however you'd like, and the icon that they're next to will appear in the calendar and timeline view next to the milestones. Then for your teams, you can have your assignees or your teammates, and then you can enter what teams they're in. From here, you set up the main details, and the details that you input here will appear in the dropdowns of all the remaining tabs. I'll show you. We move to tasks. Here you can see the phases. The phases that we outlined are here. The projects that we outlined are here. The priority statuses are here. The assignees are here and the statuses that we defined are here. So the settings are where you define all the parameters for the work ahead. Tasks. This is the main entry for where you input updates for all your different tasks. Let's say you wanna look at your apartment building project. You go here to filter your apartment build project in blanks, okay. Here you can see the different phases of your apartment building project and the different tasks, the priorities, their status, and the assignees. Let's say you have a new project in apartment build. So get rid of the others. Here we go. I have a new task, apartment build. It's in the phase of development. It's not a milestone. It's a task. So it's blueprints are confirmed. The priority, medium. Has it started? Nope, it's a new project. Who's the assignee? Michael Green. The start date and the end date, they have to be those days. We move on here to the estimated working hours. This is important if you have matrix teams and you need to make sure that you can balance everybody's workload. So in this case, I think that that is just going to be three hours. All right. The task input area is the best place for you to update the current status of your tasks. It's not the clearest place to see the progress of your project. And in my opinion, I use the timeline to do that. So here we are. The timeline view gives you a indented list view of your project. So here we see online course A, that's my project. Here are the different phases and the tasks under them, along with the status of each task. This is the view that in a team meeting I'll share because it's visually intuitive. 
alongside here, we have different timeline views that we can see for our project. I can, this is a Gantt view of the online course project. Let's say here, I want to see only online course A, and I want to see it in a, a week view by the week. Now you can see the Gantt has adjusted to view it by the week. Let's say that I want to see it by the month. And in a moment, the Gantt will update by the month. This way I can see an intuitive view of my project status, what's ongoing. And highlighted here in green is the current week that we are actually in the end of July and it's highlighting that week automatically. Let's say that I want to see all my projects at once. Okay, now you can scroll down and you see apartment build project. We can see the milestones that I entered, the YouTube video project. We can see the milestones that I've entered. And in this way, we can conceptualize the current status and timeline of all of our projects. Well, this is quite detailed. And as a portfolio manager, this is really where you're going to get your work done. I don't actually change the status of things here because this is automated. As you remember, this is one of the automatic tabs. So if I want to say create content, and actually this is complete, I have to go back to tasks. If I create content from that project, which is online course A, create content here, I switch it to complete because Michael finished it. When I go back to the timeline now, you'll see that it's automatically updated to complete. And as I complete a phase, the phase itself will be automatically adjusted to complete. So as a portfolio manager, I work with the goal of completing all the tasks here, updating them in the tasks area. A great feature of using Google Sheets is that if I want Michael to remember to do this, I just write him a comment and I write add Michael. And you can see he'll get a message immediately reminding him that this is the most priority task and I need to have it done soon. And we can use the Google Sheets chat feature to work specifically on individual tasks. This is one of the great highlights of using this um, with Google Sheets. It's the comments feature, which makes it a really collaborative tool, especially if you have a remote team. Let's say that I have gone through my timeline and I'm going to have a meeting with my team. Sometimes this level of detail that's represented here is too complicated for an online meeting. So for the online meetings, when kind of visual clarity is most important, I set up the Kanban board. The Kanban board is a series of columns that categorizes tasks by their status. And in a sense, it allows you to see where there are bottlenecks, how many, how many tasks have not started, what's in progress, what's complete, what's on hold, and what's overdue or what's past its deadline. So let's say I have a team meeting for my YouTube project. Let's say I do my apartment build project. I can see these tasks are not started and the team and I can discuss why are these tasks not started. And these tasks are overdue and I can see who they're assigned to. And we can visually use this system to discuss tasks and together work to move the task from not started in progress complete to complete. And as a team, work on shifting everything downstream towards complete. Of course, again, I, as the portfolio manager, update all the task statuses in my tasks area. Overseeing many, many projects at once can be really difficult to conceptualize these projects over time. Made popular by Outlook, the calendar view allows me to see start dates, end dates, and milestones for all my projects by the calendar. This lets me see when I'm going to be busy and when I'm not going to be busy. So let's see, April 2024, this is what's going on. Let's try to go to March 2024. Okay, I can see some start dates. I can see some different tasks and milestones are ongoing. If this becomes a little difficult, you can also have the agenda view where it goes from the beginning of the month to the end with the different events and milestones that are upcoming for all my projects all together. And you can see that the project name and the tasks are all 
combined in one list. So this is very helpful for planning, or in a sense, time traveling into the future and through your past projects and trying to gauge when you'll be busy and not busy. All right. One of the big responsibilities of a portfolio manager is to report to their higher ups. And in this case, you really want to look like you've got everything well organized. And if you're using our portfolio manager, you've got everything well organized with our project report tool. The project report tool drills into one project at a time. Here it can be filtered by project and it gives you the key metrics for understanding that project. The basics, such as the start date, the end date, and the percentage complete, along with a mini timeline or a mini Gantt chart, which is helpful. Then we have a count of the tasks by their status and two alerts. Current tasks, those are tasks that are between their start date and end date, and overdue tasks. These are tasks that are not yet complete, but their due date has passed. Then we have the <coughs> percentage of the project by task status. For our matrix teams, we see the amount of assigned hours. Then we see the hours assigned per person, per team. And then each team's rate of complete and each member's rate of complete. And this is something when you're managing matrix teams, you want to look at to see how much um, just to make sure that you're not over assigning anyone. But the really good one for each project is the overdue tasks table. In a sense, on a project meeting, you can just open this, look through the overdue tasks, see how many days they're overdue by, and use this as a starting point for your meeting for kind of passing through bottlenecks. Um, because it reminds you who was responsible for what, the fact that they are now late and it lets you focus on where you need to resolve any issues. So this is the project report dashboard and it can be filtered project by project showing you the different statuses. And if you are reporting to many different many different projects to many different leaders having an automatic an automatic dashboard saves you tons and tons of time. You can share it in emails as a screenshot or as copy paste. You can even share the link with your higher ups. Now, as a portfolio manager, you're actually managing many, many, many projects at the same time. So you need to have a portfolio level view. And this is our final dashboard. This is the portfolio level dashboard. This is where you see the total number of projects that you're managing then you see the count and alerts of your project statuses, the percentage complete of your project, the amount in percentage of by which each project is at a certain status. And here we have, in a sense, a mini, a mini Kanban board and percent complete per project. So you can compare them all. And if you are balancing resources, make decisions on how to get them all to complete. Over on the right side, we have the resource dashboard. This is where we're mostly looking at personnel. You have the percent complete by team, the assigned estimated working hours for your teams, their progress along their tasks, and then you can see your different teammates and the tasks they have. There you have it. You don't need to pay for expensive project management subscriptions. With this one-time purchase, you'll own this spreadsheet that can track a thousand projects. As I mentioned, give you a commanding view over your schedules, your personnel, your tasks. And it creates clear visualizations that focus on the teams and teammates, guiding them to do what needs to be done and helps you effortlessly report updates to leadership. The download link is in the description. Thank you.